Hello and welcome to The Feedback Show. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. We're back with a hopefully glitch-free feedback show. <laughs> I'm sure you'll let me know, Dad, if we uh, experience any errors like we did last time. I will certainly. You'll be the first to know, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so we tried this... It can't uh, happen again. No, I know. We tried a couple oh, of weeks ago. Can it? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty... It was pretty... Um, it's pretty went pretty wrong didn't it last time so hopefully <laughs> hopefully it'll go right this time um not many submissions this week um i think everyone's right coming out of the summer holidays perhaps they're taking holidays off uh, who knows well, well it could be they're all they've all got so good at it that they don't need me anymore <laughs> <laughs> oh well there you go then might as well yeah. after today you know that's right. <laughs> wrap it up <laughs> uh, um so if you're new to the show this is the the youtube series where we give feedback on your pastel pencil artwork it's a service that's available to members of colin bradley art so if you want to learn about becoming a member then go to colinbradleyart.com and this little added service is a bonus to you members so uh, all the artwork and tips that we're featuring today are for our members only so let's start off with uh, a piece of artwork sent to us by jill this was hopefully this was it's going to work out because it was meant to be featured on the last feedback show but we had all these technical problems so we had to save it to this one so jill sent us this lovely picture picture of a, a german shepherd and she's done a really good job here. She asked, um, I just wondered if it matters that you don't add every stroke to the fur as in the reference photo. Why I ask is because I feel I am developing my own style. And after all, this painting is not supposed to be just a copy of the photograph. Am I right? Absolutely. 100% exactly how I feel about it. Um, an art work a picture of this kind really needs to be an impression, your impression of the animal and how you see it. Um, obviously, if it's done for a person, uh, then that person who owns the animal wants it to look like the animal. You can't do a Picasso on it or an impressionistic uh, Renoir on it because that's that would be unacceptable. They're actually looking for it. But there are times, and you've done it beautifully here, where you can use your own, as you say, your own style. And that is exactly what you need to do. Um, as long as you keep within those sort of boundaries, I try to do that, but I still do my own thing and always have done. Mm -hmm. So you're absolutely right, exactly. A couple of things that I will point out to you. One is the background. You do need to put backgrounds on, Jill your pictures are so good that they deserve even a simple background and unfortunately you know they are really hard to do but stick at it and try because eventually that will turn a very good picture you've presented here into a great one and you won't have any problems a couple of small things that I will pick up on though the nose itself is a tricky old thing to do and if you look at the nose on the animal you'll see that it fuses with the snout got it mm, you, yeah. do you understand what i'm saying by this it it fuses it doesn't look as though it's been stuck on where if you look at your one it looks as though it's been put on now how to get over that well how you get over that if you look at the left hand side of the nose on the photograph you'll see that it blends in with the uh, edges mm. of the snout you got, got got what i mean yeah what you've done is put a kind of a line on there a light line on there but if you got rid of that if you just fused it with a color shaper or and probably that's what I would use and blended it you'd see a tremendous difference there so mm. you've got these are little subtle things that you would you would learn yourself in time you'd come across them in time but they're things that I would pick up on another small thing is if you look at the left nostril there it looks as though it's a little round hole on both 
Now, nostrils aren't like mm. that. They actually cut in on both sides. So you need to look at that a bit more and make give the impression that the, the nostril does extend round the side, or at least the... You got what I'm trying to say? Yes, I do. The I do, tiny, I do, yeah. tiny little things, and I, you're going. You're going to probably say Colin is so picky, <laughs> but you deserve it. You deserve it, Jill, because the picture is so good. Your your technique is so good that what I want to do with you is I want to turn you into a great artist. You're on your way. You're well on your way there, and I'm sure everybody looking at this will agree with me. These tiny things that you've got to look at, you've got to find your own way of doing them. But it's mm. a brilliant picture, and I congratulate you. I, I mm. really think that's a terrific. The tongue is something you mentioned, and again, these are really hard, aren't they? How do you put a line in a tongue? If you look at the line in the tongue of the photograph, you'll see that it's it's not grey, which is what you've done. So how do you do that? Well, what you do there is you, you put a little grey in, not perhaps quite as much as you've done, and then you cover it with the same colour you use as the base, or the pinky colour. That way you lose the greyness of it. So this is what you've got to try to do. There's quite a lot of tongues coming up, I've got to tell you. Mm. Uh, in the next, as Steve will tell you, in the next few months there's going to be quite a lot of tongue in fact i'm working on one right at this moment of time i'm working on I've just just finished a tongue on a, another dog which i've almost completed mm. so you're going to see a lot of these tongues so try to look at them and analyze the way i do it you've still got artistic license you can still do your own thing but these are small things that uh, make a difference and uh, you've done a great job of it and uh, I, I, I do feel rather guilty in actually pulling this to bits. Well, I'm not pulling it to bits, but I'm I'm sort of criticising a little bit, and I shouldn't be doing that because it's a lovely picture. So mm. backgrounds, watch the noses, and try to get that blend in, the subtle blend if you can, and mm. uh, the tongue I've already established. The thing is, these are all minor things. These are little minor oh. tweaks, and that's and that's a compliment, really, because it's, you can't. There's no. It, it, you can only. That's the only thing we can do is find little minor tweaks because it's that good. So well, that's exactly yeah. what I want to do because this is what I, I I said I want to turn Jill into a great artist. She's on her way there. She's mm. following her dad's footsteps. I think it was a dad that was a, an artist, wasn't yeah. it? You're yeah. on your way there. It's just a matter of just finding those few things that you can do. Uh, and probably I'm lucky because I've been there. I've been where you've been many, many times before, and I've gone through that uh, same dilemma. So I've come out the other end, and this is how I can, with authority, I can say to you, just pick up on those small things but you're on your way. I'm looking forward to seeing your pictures in another year's time. Mm, They're going to be stunning. Oh, but well get to the backgrounds, Jill. You've got to get those backgrounds in. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done. So this is, uh, this is from Tony in Bergen, Norway. Uh, my friend Jason loves Bergen, goes there twice a year, loves Bergen. I've never been, but I've heard it's a beautiful place. Lovely. Um, hello, Stephen. Hello, Colin. After your feedback on my uh, line, which was very encouraging to me, I've done several of your exercises and I've loved every one of them. This is my last one, which I finished yesterday. As you can see, one part of the flower is more bluish than the rest. I've tried to repair it by adding more pink, one, two, seven, but that did not work. Anyway, I'm quite happy with the result and would appreciate your professional comments and advice. Right. Um, well, certainly, I. I I agree. If you've already got the base colour in, which is basically a bluey colour, and you try to put the pink on top, it won't work. The, 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 you, you've got it. You'd be better to have put the pink on first, then the blue on top of the pink. It's, gotcha. it's just it's just a different way of approaching it. That's all. Um, but that but nonetheless, it's very good. The colour of the photograph that you've taken is I, probably not very good, and it doesn't do it as justice. Yeah, if you've done it on my paper, if you've done it on the on grey paper, 
it's got a greyish look to it and that sort of reflects right across the picture which is a bit of a shame because I'm sure it doesn't look like that but it it's great well done on that and well done on the background I, I love the way you've you've managed to get those fusions of the of the pinks in and the gray watch one small thing watch the halo now if you look at my flower you'll see that's got a bit of a halo on it hasn't it you can see I can see and you've probably mm. copied that so that's probably my fault I should have I should have made that less of a halo I just wanted to bring the flower out um, so watch that um, but but you've copied me so I, I can't criticize you for that so well done um, as far as the rest of the animals concerned if you look at you remember I, the, the last picture when I said to Jill that you you put lines in which really aren't there well you've done the same thing if you look at the body you've outlined the, the top of the part of the body with the line the bottom half of the body does have that and if you look at mine you'll see it but the top half doesn't so that uh, could have been fused a bit more and lost those lines if you'd lost those two lines it would have helped a little bit yeah because it, it kind of gives you a it almost by putting the lines as you've done it you've almost separated the body from the wings if you see what I mean where they do need to be um, you know fused together a bit more but it's a small thing something you can do a stroke of a pencil yeah, you, I see, yeah. you see what i mean sort of around good just just yeah, small. Yeah, yeah being picky again but uh, that's what you asked me to do and but i think it's great well done on that it looks good are you are you there steve I think we may have had a frozen screen, folks. I don't know whether you can hear me. Well, as we're live, I'll hang on and wait to, to see whether Steve comes back. I had a feeling something was going wrong because I, when I was listening to Steve, it was sort of jerking a little bit. So I think our, our connections done a naughty again. I'll just wait for Steve and see whether he can come on. I'm not even sure you're listening to me on this. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. Are we, are we all back? Um, I th yeah, I think we, I don't think we left. Unfortunately, my laptop froze. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so I'm still here, but I've had to switch computers. Um, so well, I can't see you at all now. No, I'm, I'm bringing it back. There we go. Oh, me. okay. I'll wait patiently. What I hope you, everybody what out there is still. Away? Hey? What were you doing whilst I was away? Um, having a drink of water. Singing to yourself. Twiddling the thumbs, doing a little bit more artwork. <laughs> <laughs> I don't waste any time, you know. Oh, that's better. You're, you're back on now. Yeah, there you go. So we go back up to that the last one again. I think, did I, did you get me, did you get all of that I said about that? I, th I thought I did. I thought I did. I mean, but I don't know. I don't know. Perhaps our viewers will tell us after the fact. Yeah, I think I'd, I think I'd got to the end of it anyway, but I wasn't sure how many, uh, how much I said. Anyway, I'm glad <laughs> we're back. 
Oh, so it's God. your fault this time. It's, you can't blame the hangouts in the air this time. No, yeah. <laughs> it's probably all been my fault, to be honest. It's, it's probably the connection here that's not, not great. Uh, uh. But anyway, anyway, I will, uh, I will continue on as if yep. nothing happened. Uh, this one is uh, from Adam. And this isn't obviously feedback. This is a picture. And Adam wants to do this gorgeous puppy. Mm. And he's got an idea of the colours for the picture, but he's not quite sure on the ears. Mm. So can yeah. you give Adam any advice on the ears? Yeah, certainly. What I would do there is I would use my white pencil sparingly. You can put, you know, where you see the light colour on the ear, put the white in with the white. But I'd use a grey. And the grey I would use here, I think, would would be the 230 light gray and then you could follow that with 233 but the color you see that movie colors in there that's 169 oh yeah that's yeah, yeah. My very favorite color at the moment 169 169 with uh, 181 as your darkening agent now those those selection of colors i've given you there would be perfect for it that would that would give you what you needed there you might need to add uh, a little bit of pink maybe a little bit of something like uh, let me think probably 131 might be a good color now on its own it would be miles too pinky but if you add it to the gray and the 169 you'll probably turn it into the color that's there make it just a little bit more mauvey looking but those are the colors i'd use for the ears maybe a little bit of ivory if you need it but uh, keep it keep it handy in case you do because there's ivory in the fur if you look at the yeah uh, the eyes at the top of the head they've got a lot of ivory in that so there it would be white and ivory would be the next color i would use to make it that and there's another color steve that uh, i've used very successfully as an additional color which is 102 now 102 is a, a creamy color not like unlike ivory but it's a little bit more creamy a little more yellowy and if you use that on top of the colors i've suggested you'll create that lovely sort of creamy look to the skin the um, fur or hair ah. And that would look really nice with that. So yeah. that's what I would use. And the blue eyes, well, the blue eyes, again, start with the gray, 230. And then I would probably still add a little bit of the um, 233 into it, but be very sparingly. Because if you don't do that, you might find the blue is too severe. And then the blue you could use, you could use quite a few there. I would suggest 143 possibly, or even uh, 149. I think 140, which is a, a nice a light color, might be a bit uh, light, too light for that. Yeah. So those other colors. You've also got a variety of colors as well. You've got 157 that you could even use as a, a base on top of the 233 for the eye, for instance, before you put the darker 181 in. And that would create a, a, like a grayish, bluish look. Mm. Play with the colors. That's what I do when, I, when I've got a problem like this. I just play with the colors on spare paper. Uh, you Excellent. don't have to draw an eye. You can just play with the colors to see whether you've got the tones right. Amazing. Excellent. That's, that's what I'd use. But it's a lovely picture. Gosh, that is nice. Yeah, I tell you what I would worry about, though, if it was me on that one. And Adam, I'm sure if he's taken the picture, would know what it was. I'm not sure he's, what he's chewing, what he's got in his hand. Yeah. You get a situation. Folks, this is interesting because you get a situation like that. What do you do? Do you copy exactly what you see? And then everybody who looks at the picture say, what's he chewing there? What's he chewing? What's that? Or do you replace it with something else? And if you replace it with something else, you've got to make that look uh, natural. So you have got a bit of a problem there. What would you do? What I would, I'd, I'd take another picture. Uh, yeah, she's a different picture. Mm. Yeah, I wouldn't use a picture. You see, something like that would be too difficult for me to orchestrate. There's a nice word. I don't think I've ever used that. <laughs> Do you know, I've never used that in, in my art, but I'm going to use it again because I like it so much. Orchestrate, yeah. No, you can't produce something that is acceptable. You can't even 
cut something out. So what would you do? That's what I would do. Yeah. But it's not me. It's Adam's doing. Listen, you've got to deal with it. You might know what it is. I mean, as I say, if you've taken the photograph or uh, you know uh, what it is and you can ask the person, then uh, they can tell you and you can make perhaps a better representation of that. Yeah. But it looks a bit like an old sock to me, rolled up sock. Yeah. And that's okay. not going to go down really very well, not on the picture. Okay. I, yeah. hope, I hope I haven't put you off this, but I, my, my job here is to help you and everybody else uh, find the potential, uh, find your potential in animal portraiture. And these are the kind of things that are really difficult. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good, it's good to hear your perspective on it though, as well, and hear mm. what, what you would do. I mean, that's, that's the idea, isn't it? That's all you can ever do, but it's an interesting mm. uh, angle that you're coming from why why it would be a tricky picture to do and it that's right we've we've talked about on many podcasts and shows about the pictures and the reference pictures and how tricky it is to get a really good reference picture that you know like you said don't have to orchestrate too much you don't have to mm. tweet too much so mm -hmm. this is a good example there, there is at the, the worst scenario here if someone said look i really want that and i don't care you know how much you alter it or adjust it there is a possibly a way of doing it so if we could have a little bit of fun here steve and use your little pointer if you can bring the bottom of the picture up keep going until i tell you to stop keep going stop just a bit lower touch lower than that just a touch that's it that's fine now bring the sides in until I tell you to stop. Yep, stop. Yep, that's fine. Now the other side in. Cut into that ear. A little bit more. A little bit more. A bit more. Okay, stop. Now bring it down from the top. And stop just before you get to the uh, top of the head. Just before you get to the top of the head. Okay, now let's have a look at that. It's not great. It's not perfect. It's a shame that you've had to cut it. But if you just wanted a, a representation of, um, you know, an animal of that kind, that would be one way of getting out of it. Mm. Very unsatisfactory, I've got to say, even though I said it myself. But it's another way. I've seen pictures like that. I've seen pictures uh, presented like that. Anyway, it? for what it's worth, folks, there it is. Yeah. It's interesting though, isn't it? How you can, you can try and, you know, rescue a picture by altering its composition. Absolutely. And if you're looking, if you're now looking at that picture, which I, I agree, you actually take a little bit, uh, a little bit further back, you can easily get rid of that little bit of old sock that's sticking up. Yeah. Just, just by coloring it in, just yeah. by moving the color down, you could easily get rid of that. So that's not a problem. Okay. Interesting though, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And I hope I hope everybody have found these things interesting because it's something that I do all the time when I'm looking at pictures. Uh, I mean, I do all sorts of things. I take a head off one and put it on something else, and I, I do all sorts of uh, Frankenstein uh, things. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but it, you know, if you and you probably would never know I've done it. Well, I hope you don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> and I don't do it that often. But, um, you know, you can do things like that. You're an artist. You're creative. That's your job, to present something that is uh, acceptable and uh, nice to look at. That's mm. your job. That's what mm. you're, you're paid for. Mm. Absolutely. Oh, well, uh, th thanks, Adam, for sending over. I hope that advice helps. Um, and that's all we've got for this week. That's all the submissions we've got. Obviously, if you want to get advice on your artwork, then just go to our website, colinbradleyart.com and get in touch with us. Um, send it over via email. And um, obviously, the only prerequisite is that you have to be a member of the website in order to get this bonus. And if you let us know what area you're having trouble with or challenging, uh, part of your picture that you found challenging, then that really helps us to, to focus on that for the show, as you've seen with these submissions well hopefully next time we won't have any glitches oh i think this was quite fun 
<laughs> I hope everybody found that fun. You know, suddenly, where's he gone? What's happened to him? If you were watching that, you I wondered good... if we'd ever recover it. We did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know what to do now. There's just one final thing I'd like to just add, Steve, if I may, on this one. Uh, a little plug for our, my Craftsy course that's coming up. I had a, an email, a really nice email today from Anna. Now, she, she's a script editor that we work with, you and I work with, for quite a long time. Uh, to get the script ready for the uh, Craftsy show. And she came to me, uh, actually sent me an email today, which was really nice, saying that she'd seen the finished course and she was they were all delighted with it. Yeah. It, it went very well and there were a lot of nice things, which I'm not going to repeat because <laughs> I'd be too embarrassed. So, but they were, she was very, very complimentary. And uh, so, folks, you've got to give this a go. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll, I will read out a little bit of what she said because... No, don't do that. Don't do uh, that. No, all I'll say is... <laughs> all I'll say is the two-project class, she said, um, she believes it will not only be encouraging for students but also equip them with skills they need to tackle future projects. I thought that was a really nice... No, it was, it was, that was yes. our aim. Was it to was nice. people with the skills. Yes, it was nice. And uh, uh, it was very, very nice of her. Um, I mean, we had a lovely time. And uh, uh, and if, if, if it all goes really well and, you know, they're delighted with the response rate, then you never know. It, we may get back to Denver one day. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? So we can't wait. It is so exciting. I'm, <laughs> I'm just taking it week by week. We well, have to, don't we? <laughs> but I can't, literally can't wait for people to, to see it and to try it out. Great. So, um, don't forget, there is a giveaway on our website as well. If you go to colinbradleyart.com and go to the blog, there is a, a giveaway for the Craftsy class. So if you want to be in the chance to win access to that class when it goes live, then head over to our blog. Well, that's, that's well worth it. By all accounts, it's, it's going to be well worth it. Yeah. Okay. All right, then we'll, uh, we'll leave it there for, for this week. <laughs> we'll be back uh, with a podcast next week. Um, thank you, everyone, for tuning in. I'm Stephen Bradley. And I'm Colin Bradley. Bye for now. <laughs>